Hello everyone and welcome back to part 3, Document Object Model Events, and we're going to learn how to use JavaScript to trigger on events. So we don't always want to have to specify beforehand how to interact with the document object model. It's unrealistic that we're going to be editing the console every single time or that we'll magically know in the JavaScript what we want to actually interact with. Many times we only want the interaction to occur on a particular event such as a click or a hover, and that's what you've been used to when you visit real websites. What we want to do is achieve this sort of effect by adding what's known as an event listener. And the JavaScript will be listening for an event to occur and then execute a function when it happens. Let me show you some example code so you can get a better idea of what I mean by this. Imagine we want to listen for an event. Well, the basic form looks like this. It's my variable whatever variable you happen to have grabbed from the document object model. Then you say dot add event listener, you call that method, and then you pass in a particular event and a function. So for example, let's say we grab the head of the document or heading one by saying document dot query selector h1. Then off of that variable, we would say add event listener, pass in an event name and an example event name is such as click, and then comma, we would pass in some function, such as the change color function that we've seen earlier. And that's the basic form of event listeners. You pass in a particular event name, and then you pass in a function that you've created or a built-in function that you want to have happen upon the event. So there are many, many possible events. Uh, just a few of them are things such as clicks, hovers, double clicks, dragging, and there's much more. What I recommend is if you're really interested in all these events, then check out this link right here. You can just uh, Google search Mo developer Mozilla JavaScript events, or excuse me, document object model events, and it'll probably take you to this page. But there's the link if you want it. We're just going to show you a few of the most useful events. So let's explore these events. I'm going to hop over to my editor and browser and show you how you can make the interaction functions occur upon a particular event. Okay, so I have my editor open, and I also have a blank HTML file called main.html. And then I also have a blank JavaScript file called myscript.js. And I'm going to grab the full path to main HTML and then go to it in my browser on the right hand side. And it's blank right now. So let's put in some HTML content. That way we can in the future grab it using document object model. So right now in the body, I'm going to add in three H1 tags. The first H1 tag is going to say hover over me. And we're going to give it an ID equal to 1. Then the second h1 tag, it's going to say click me, and we'll give it an ID tag of 2. And then heading 1, it gets an ID tag, you've probably guessed it, of 3. And it's going to say double click me. We're going to save that. Let's refresh our page. And here we see hover over me, click me, and double click me. And now let's connect it using the script tag. So I will say script and then src, the source is equal to myscript.js. Save that. And now let's hop over to myscript.js and show you how we can add in event listeners. So the first thing we need to do is actually grab the document object model variables that we want. So the first one we'll call head1 and I want that to be document dot query selector and then I can just pass in hashtag one and I'm going to copy and paste this line since the next two are going to look really similar. So instead of one we'll say the ID two and then instead of one there we'll say three and then coming all the way over here We'll change this as well to head three and then head two. So we have everything. And just to make sure it's all connected, I'm going to say console.log connected. Let's save this, refresh our page, and here I see console.log connected. So everything's working well. I can get rid of this now. And let's show you how to add a basic event listener. First thing we need to do after grabbing from the document object model is grab the variable and then you say dot and you add an event listener and make sure your spelling 
and capitalization is correct here. So add event listener. And one event you may want to do is what's known as a mouse over. And that's essentially whenever your mouse is hovering over some object or some HTML attribute, then the function will take place. So the keyword here is mouse over. That's the event name. And then we pass a function, curly brackets, and then hit enter. And here is where we can define the function. What we do we want to actually happen when we call mouse over? So let's have the text change. So I will say head one dot text content is equal to mouse currently over. Let's save that. We'll refresh our page. And now you'll notice when I hover my mouse over this one time, it says mouse currently over. And then it stops. So that's the very basic of mouse over. Let's add one more change to this. We'll also change the color. We'll say head one style.color and set that equal to something really obvious like red. Save it, refresh the page, and then I see hover over me. And as I come in and I hover over, it says mouse currently over, and then I can't change it back. So how do we actually make it so that once my mouse comes off of it, it reverts back? Well, the way we can do that is with the mouse out event. So again, I grab head one, I add an events listener, and then I say mouse out, pass in a function call here. And for this function call, we will have it say head one, and we will call the text content of head one to be equal to what it originally said. And what it originally said was something like hover over me. And then let's change it back to its original color. And its original color was black. OK. So here we can save this. And let's try this again. And now we should see the change. If I'm saying mouse currently over, I pull my mouse off, and it says hover over me. And now I can see it turn on and off as my mouse hovers over it. So pretty cool. You can kind of play around with this a lot. But that's the very basics of adding an event listener. Again, you're grabbing something from the document object model, probably using query selector. In the next section, we'll learn how to do this with jQuery. And then you say add event listener, whatever event you're looking for. You can check out that link for a huge list of event names. And then you pass in the function and what you actually want to occur in that function when this event takes place. All right, so that's a very basic event listener. Let's show you some more basic ones, such as on clicks. I'll grab head two, add an event listener. And for a click, it's just that keyword, click. Then I will call function. And the function I want here is, let's change it upon click. So we'll say head two, text content. We'll have it say clicked on. And we'll also change its color just so it's really obvious. Head two style.color, and I'm going to change that to be blue. Let's save it, refresh over here, and right now as I hover over this thing, it changes. If I click on the click me, I can see it says clicked on. All right, pretty cool so far. Finally, let's show you how we can do a double click. Head to, add event listener. The keyword for this one is dbl click, that stands for double click. Again, we'd have the function call, curly brackets, and then whatever you want happens to any really HTML element on the page, we'll do it to, whoops, this should actually be head three, not head two, my apologies. And then let's change the text content, and we'll say I was double click. And then we'll say head three. Let's also change the color and we'll set it equal to red. Save it, refresh our page. And we can see here my hover is working. 
I'm going to click this, it's got clicked on, and then if I double, if I only click once, you can't really see it or hear it, but I'm only clicking once here, it's only until I double click that I see I was double clicked. All right, so that's the basics of using events with JavaScript and the document object model. Coming up next, we're going to be doing a walkthrough of a very simple game project, a very, very simple tic-tac-toe model. It's not even going to be a full game of tic-tac-toe, just to get an idea of what all of this would look like in a larger front-end stack project. Thanks, everyone, and I will see you at the next lecture.